Good morning, everybody. I'm Reverend Kaya Hartwood. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, they, and I'm real happy to see you all. Welcome to UUCBV or Unitarian Universalist Church of the Brazos Valley. We're going to start this morning by learning a round that's perfect for this time of season. It's uh, called Hey Ho Nobody Home. Maybe you've heard it before. The words are Hey Ho Nobody Home. Meat nor drink nor money have I none. Yet I will be married. That's the words. And we're going to sing it a couple times together and then we'll do it as a round. Nobody home, me nor drink, no money, have I none. Yet I will be married. Hey, oh, nobody home, me nor drink, no money, have I none. Yet I will be married. Hey. You got it. Want to do the first? Your hat. Sure. Let's start. You guys are mine. We wait. <laughs> we wait, okay? Here we go. Oh, we sing that Ain't No Nobody Home twice. Yeah. Sing it as many times as you want. <laughs> All right. How, how many times do you want to sing the whole thing? Oh, the whole thing? I don't know. Let's do it four. Okay, that's okay. Great. Hey, no, nobody home. of age, race, ability, immigration status, and, of course, belief. We are a congregation working for a reproductive justice. So whoever you are, and wherever you have come from, wherever you are on life's journey, we welcome you here. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, we resume the Wednesday, the Wednesday night book club, and this series is on mystery books. We meet at Reverend Kaya and Maya's house at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night or by Zoom, and this link is on the calendar on our website. Join in to discuss some of your favorite mystery books. We're not going to be reading books. We're going to share the ones we've already read and encourage others to read. Um, online giving. You can give by check or by our website. Click on Give in the main menu. Online giving, you'll find several options, including your pledge, which is the 2022-23 financial commitment option, and to match our religious education grant 
We had a grant from one of our members and um, he has donated $10,000 to the compensation for our RE director. So we need to raise 20,000 more. And we've got some money coming in, but keep it coming. Movie night at Reverend, Mag, Reverend Kaya and Reverend Mag's house is this Friday, December the 2nd at 6 p.m. The musical Come From Away. I've never heard of that, so I'm looking forward to watching that movie. Um, I guess it'll be outside unless it's cold and then we'll move inside. I think it'll probably be inside. Oh, inside. On the weather report. <laughs> and then Sunday, I mean, not Sunday, Saturday night, uh, Pam and Val Johnson have invited us to their Christmas party, but please RSVP. Look at your eCast for that information. Thank you. Our call to worship this morning. The good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. For me, I am driven by two main philosophies. No more today about the world than I knew yesterday and lessen the suffering of others. You'd be surprised how far that gets you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now join me as we light our chalice by saying our words together. We light the chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, as a beacon of hope for all who seek justice, dignity, and compassion. And in celebration of the life of truth and meaning, we share together. And now our affirmation statement. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its gift. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Good morning. Before our time for all ages today, I know that many of us are mourning the loss of Maya Lazarus today. Um, I wanted to share a few words that Claire Lindo um, asked me to share. She was Maya's um, pen pal over the summer, and they continued to write. Um, Claire is 10 years old. She said that her and Maya became pen pals through the RE pen pal program this summer. They immediately bonded over their shared love of animals. Um, so much so that every time I saw Claire, pretty much, she said, did you know Miss Maya had whatever, fill in the blank animal? <laughs> they were both animal lovers. Um, their relationship developed over the summer, but they continued writing to each other. Um, the, I delivered Maya Claire's pumpkin. She decorated here in late October. And uh, Maya wrote back a thank you letter to Claire um, and some of what would be the last weeks of her life. Um, this relationship that we have here between uh, our elders and our young people is really, really special. And it's something that's really not recreated anywhere else in our society unless you try really hard. Um, so I want you all to keep Maya in your thoughts um, and her family and also Claire, um, who was very close to her. All right, so our time for all ages today, are you a chicken? <laughs> our time for all ages today is about the expansion of the universe. In 1929, Dr. Edwin Hubble looked in the, well, Hubble telescope, right? And noticed that the bodies in space were moving apart but they didn't necessarily move at the same rate apart from one another. But this was told Dr. Hubble that the universe was expanding. And why was the universe expanding, do you think? Anybody know? Because the explosion from the Big Bang was keeping it on the boundaries. Excellent. The energy from the Big Bang was still radiating out and making um, stars, planets, galaxies expand away from one another. And a really cool way to show that is with a balloon and a Sharpie. You 
might be questioning your choice to come listen to me today, but hold on. Okay. And I'm going to try not to embarrass myself and blow this up on the first try. Okay. So, can I get a helper? Will you help me? Can you draw about 10 different dots on here?
You know, we were celebrating uh, the life of our dear Maya Lazarus today. Uh, Dina brought us these beautiful flowers, and I know it's a great loss to all of us that she's not with us today. So, um, joys and sorrows. We're going to start out with that. If you don't know, Maya passed away with her family um, on Thanksgiving Day from cancer. Um, we take this moment to reflect on our joys and sorrows. If you have something you'd like to share with the community, be it happy or sad, we are happy to hear you. You just come up to the mic and tell everybody what you want to say. I also want to take, do something new today. You ready? Mm -hmm. Hello. We celebrate that there is a spark of the divine in every person, even Robin. Mm -hmm. And so, look at your neighbors and just introduce yourself and say hey. If, you, if there's somebody you haven't met yet, you might want to go introduce yourself. We open the floor up to anybody who wants to share joy or sorry. Be, be aware that we are sharing this online this evening. And so if you don't want the entire universe to know, you might want to consider what you say. Mom, what does this look like? Robin, you got something to share? You want to tell everybody? Got anything you want to share? No? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Here you go, Dina. Well, married to a physicist, he's enjoying this, he's going to enjoy this service today. Um, but physicists are saying, we know the what, we know the how, we know the when, but we don't know the why. something about Maya, and I was telling my granddaughter on the way over here that I have a memory. We had a 70th birthday party at Gay's, um, and there was a few of us. There was about four of us, and had wine, and Maya was really happy, and uh, she put on some gumbia music, and Maya and I danced together. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that, that make, you know, that, that's a good memory, and it makes me feel happy. I, I'm going to miss it. Anybody else? <sighs> um, I have a prayer for world peace that I would like to share in honor of Maya and her love of peace. We pray for the power to be gentle, the strength to be forgiving, the patience to be understanding, and the endurance to accept the consequences of holding on to what we believe to be right. May we put our trust in the power of good to overcome evil and the power of love to overcome hatred. We pray for the vision to see and the faith to believe in a world emancipated from violence. A new world where fear shall no longer lead men or women to commit injustice. Now our selfishness make them bring suffering to others. Help us to devote our whole life and thought and energy to the task of making peace. Praying always for the inspiration and the power to fulfill the destiny for which we and all men and women were created. Amen. Ashe. Blessed be. And now we're going to sing hymn number 203, 
So if you need to share, we don't have enough hymnals, so. We got the words up there, all right, rocking. This is an all ukulele service. Are we singing all five verses? Yeah, let's sing them all. Creatures of the earth and sky. sermon we're just talking about the amazing things of science so I just looked in the year 2022 so these to me are the top 10 discoveries of 2022 just be amazed think about your blinks and how many stars are being made number 10 this is like David Letterman okay <laughs> 
Number 10. 30,000 years ago, a baby wool a woolly mammoth was born, and when miners in Canada discovered him frozen in the permafrost, they called the experts and they couldn't believe it because this mammoth baby was perfectly preserved with toenails, skin, a trunk, and hair. It is the best preserved woolly mammoth ever found in North America. And the scientists said it's like meeting a li living mammoth. It's their first time they've ever got to do that. Um, if you look it up, you'll see pictures. Pretty mind-blowing. Number nine. Number nine. Leprosy is one of the oldest and most persistent diseases, but the bacteria that causes it may have the surprising ability to grow organs, specifically your liver. Think of all the diseases that that would help. Because when leprosy is happening, it, um, it does something to, the, to your organs to make them grow so that it can carry more um, of the bacteria. And so they think that they can take that and twist it into uh, a way to make more uh, livers, make it grow you a new liver, or have your uh, liver get healthier. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it could re regrow damaged livers, thereby reducing the need for transplantation, which is currently the only curative option for people with end-stage scarred livers. So imagine that. That's pretty trippy, right? Science is so wonderful. I'm trying to not bore you. Um, yeah. So. I think everybody remembers in September when uh, NASA used DART and moved the asteroid. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about that. If you didn't hear about this, it's pretty amazing. NASA, NASA smashed a spacecraft about the size of um, an English telephone booth um, into an asteroid in September. Their aim was to see if they could knock the asteroid off its orbit. So if an asteroid was coming at Earth, could we launch a rocket and knock it out of hitting the Earth? That would be a, a relaxing thought if we had that option. Something that could protect Earth from an apocalyptic asteroid strike, like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs millions of years ago. The $325 million craft was the size of a vending machine. It was directed at the asteroid Dimorphos, which was about 6.8 million miles away from the Earth. So I'm very excited that NASA has that many good mathematicians because they figured it out, they got it done. It slammed into the space rock at 14,000 miles an hour and was destroyed instantly. Anything else you need to know about that? No. Sorry? Did it change the course? Yeah, it did. It changed the course of the asteroid. So now you can rest easy that that movie will never happen. <laughs> All right. Number seven. Brain cells were grown in a lab, have learned to play video games on their own. <laughs> Australian re researchers say they've grown brain cells in a lab that have learned to play the vintage video game Pong. The many brains they created can sense and respond to their environment. Dr. Brent Kagan said his team had created the first sentient brain grown in a lab. We could find no better term for the describe the device. It was able to take in information from an external source, process it, and then respond to it in real time. Now, it wasn't good at Palm. <laughs> it, it missed a lot. But it, it got enough right that they could tell it wasn't just random. The mind brain learned to play the games in five minutes, the researcher said. It frequently missed the ball, but its connection rate was higher than random chance. I know that you all rest a lot easier knowing <laughs> that we have pond playing and brain cells growing in a petri dish. Okay. Number six. Some people who seem to be in a coma may actually be conscious and hear. It's called covert consciousness a state in which the brain reacts to the outside world with some comprehension, but the body remains unresponsive. So one in seven people that are in a coma can hear exactly what's going on around them. 
Well, I think a lot of us sort of sense this before. So when you are reading to your loved ones or you're hanging out and you're talking to them, you're taking a risk, but it's a good risk and it helps people. They're more, if they happen to be hearing you, they are more likely to come back. So it's a real good thing to do. I thought that was pretty good information. Yeah, 15 to 20% of the patients appear to hear it. Studies have found that people whose covert consciousness is detected early have a greater chance of full functional recovery. The understanding that as the brain recovers, one in seven could be conscious and aware, very much aware of what's being said about them. So don't talk trash about them. In their <laughs> and this applies every day in every ICU. It's gigantic. Number five is very un unpleasant, but I must tell you. Greenland is disappearing much more quickly than previously believed. The world's second largest sheet of ice, also known as Greenland, seems to be disappearing faster than scientists previously thought. Warmer ocean waters and rising air temperatures have accelerated the Arctic lands melting. According to a study published in Nature Geoscience, Greenland is losing about 250 billion metric tons of ice each year. And that's causing things like, um, I didn't put this as one of the 10, but the crabs in Alaska are disappearing because it's not cold enough for them. Um, these lot, it costs about two, $200 million too, just for the fishers, the fisher industries that are based on the crabs. That's pretty devastating. Those losses are accelerating over time. Warm air causes the surface of the ice sheet to melt and the runoff is deposited into the oceans. Scientists say that the churning of water, which causes heat to rise from the oceans, and further warm water that touches the ice that makes the glaciers melt faster. This could push up ocean levels to a degree that even New York and San Francisco will have to prepare for a new normal, i.e. being underwater. Effects that a melting ice sheet could have on some coastal U.S. cities such as New York, Washington, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and New Orleans. They could all be underwater cities if the ice sheets melt enough to raise the sea levels significantly. And they've been talking about this for a while, and they were thinking maybe three feet, but double it. Do what you can. Okay. So, the European Space Agency says, number four, that there are more than 30,000 near-Earth asteroids, NEAs, in the solar system. They're space rocks, occasionally huge ones that revolve around the sun on paths relatively close to Earth's orbit, and that 1425 of them have a non-zero chance of hitting the Earth. 1425 asteroids hitting the Earth. We don't have enough little um, vending machine. Um, yeah, I guess. Of the 30,000 NEAs, about 10,000 of them are larger than 460 feet in diameter, and 1,000 are larger than 3,280 feet in diameter. So you're, they're watching those 1425, possibly comforting. On average, Earth is hit by a large asteroid every 5,000 years and a civilization-ending asteroid every one million years, years, according to NASA. But those, we can move them. All right. We're getting down to the top three. Okay, guys, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're aging faster than women. Yes. They did a study, they did a study in Finland with twins, uh, male and female twins. And it turns out that by your 20s, men are a year older biologically than their counterparts, women counterparts. And by the time they're 50, they're four years older. That's distressing. Yeah, and they, you know, it's a good study because the, these are people with the same genes and they were born at the same time. So they can tell. Anything else you need to know about that? Also, they think that one of the reasons why women uh, 
last longer? Is there estrogen? Just something to consider when you're having cramps. Okay. Number two. Following a successful launch of NASA's space launch system, this just happened. The most powerful rocket in the world, the agency's Orion spacecraft, is on its way to the moon as part of the Artemis program. Anybody heard about Artemis? Yeah, I worked the food pantry with a, a guy who was, whose family works for NASA, and he had an Artemis patch. I was like, what is that? And he told me. So now you, I'm telling you. Um, carrying an unscrewed Orion, uh, uncrewed Orion, the SLS lifted off from its Fight, flight test debut at 1.47 a.m. Wednesday, last Wednesday, and uh, from Kennedy. And they launched the first leg of the mission in which Orion is planned to travel approximately 40,000 miles beyond the moon and return to Earth over the course of 25 days. Known as Artemis I, the mission is a critical part of NASA's moon to Mars exploration approach in which the agency explores for the benefit of humanity. It's an important test for the agency before flying astronauts on the RS2 mission. So what's great about it, about it is they're, they're going back to the moon and practicing to go to Mars. And so in this, in this uh, particular thing, they're going to... Um, they're going, yeah, Artemis One is supported by thousands of people around the world, so it's like both uh, for-profit, non-profit, and countries from around the world are all work, working together to make this happen. And uh, the Artemis missions, NASA will land the first woman and the first person of color on the surface of the moon, paving the way for long-term lunar presence and serving as a stepping stone for astronauts on the way to Mars. Y'all know that they think, they're pretty sure that there's water on the moon. Mm -hmm. Just catching you up on things. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one. To me, this is the most amazing story, but I do have an extra one as well. You get a bonus. So, number one, Mars is called the red planket, planet, but once it was actually blue and covered in water, bringing us closer to finding out if Mars ever harbored light. So way back in history, hundreds of thousands of years ago, 100 million years actually, uh, Mars was covered by about 300 meter ocean, which is way more water than we've got on the Earth. Can you imagine it? The whole planet. It was bombarded by asteroids filled with ice. They're finding all this water water out in the universe. It's amazing. But it happened in the first 100 million years of the planet's evolution. Now, the difference between Mars and Earth, as I understand it, is we have tectonic plates, so the history of what our planet was like at the very beginning, or 100 million years ago, that history is gone. The, t the plates move and you can't tell, but Mars, that doesn't happen. So the history of Mars is all there for us to study. That's pretty cool, right? The new study indicates that the oceans that covered the entire planet and water were at least 300 meters deep. They may have been up to one kilometer deep. In comparison, there is actually very little water on the Earth. This happened within Mars' first 100 million years. After this period, something catastrophic happened for potential life on Earth. It is believed that there was a gigantic collision between Earth and another Mars-sized planet. I believe it's called or Titus or something. I can't remember the name of it. It was an energetic collision that formed the Earth, moon system, and at the same time wiped out all potential life on the Earth. So this is an ancient thing that happened. Therefore, the researchers have really strong evidence that conditions to allow the emergence of life were present on Earth, on Mars, long before Earth. So it's very likely, one, that we're going to find water on Mars that's still there. And two, that we're going to find evidence that there was life there at one point. They had amino acids, they could make DNA, they could make RNA. All the, all the elements of life were there. That much they've already proven. So it's amazing. I just want you to get excited because I think it's easy to just sit back and go, 
yeah, things are the same. I'm watching the same shows on TV, and I, I'm going the same places. I'm doing the same things. Y'all, stars are being made every second. Everything is happening. Don't lose your joy, and don't lose your wonder. That's what I'm trying to say today. So I've got an extra one for you. I thought this was extremely cool. Nearly seven years after New Horizons visited Pluto, you know that planet that's not a planet anymore? Okay. The little world is still revealing itself to be geologically complex. It has regions of terrain on its surface unlike anything else in the solar system. The reason being that there are giant ice volcanoes, giant ice volcanoes on Pluto and it made the surface of the planet. Been, they've been going off for, you know, a million years. And geologically speaking, these ice volcanoes may still even be erupting today. So they think that there's a subsurface, surface water, that's water, not ice. But that the volcanoes are blowing ice instead of magma. I think that's pretty cool. Well, I hope you got something out of this and that you'll just have a little wonder, just you know, put it on there. You can, you can search greatest scientific discoveries of this, this year, last year, the last 10 years, and they'll blow your mind. I mean, I could have done just medicine or just science, you know. Don't, don't give it up just because you didn't major in that or you can't do math. Now let an offering be taken to sustain and strengthen this place which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and hope, for we are now the keepers of the dream. This church shares the proceeds of the offering every week to support important nonprofit organizations with which we work. This month we continue to support the mobile food pantry, which we are a partner of and we encourage you to go out on the Usually it's the fourth Saturday of the month, but this month it'll be, I mean, December will be the third because of the holidays. Um, the Brazos Valley Food Bank began the mobile food pantry program with the goal of bringing fresh, frozen, and non-perishable food directly to food deserts. Communities with inadequate access to nutritious foods needed to maintain a healthy diet. Please be as generous as you can. Today we're going to uh, sing a song by Nick Mulvey, and I've sang it before, and you may be remember it. The chorus is really easy. It's just wake up now. That's your part. I'm going to teach it to you. Close your eyes, no one will hear you. <laughs> Wake up now. Wake up now. Any more time 
This moment is a mountain to move So move it inside Here we go Wake up now Wake up now Wake up now She had paid on her mind Said your money's your medicine But she's sick all the time Got lost in comparison Always pretending you knew That everything you were looking for Already looking at you I don't want to lose Any more time This moment is a mountain to move So move it inside Give it to me realness Give it to me stillness Give me some forgiveness Give it to me wholeness Cause I don't want to lose Any more time Last chance to sing. Wake up now. Wake up now. Wake up now. Wake up. We give thanks for these gifts that we have given, for those we receive, and for each other. May your generosity return to you a millionfold. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You, that's simultaneously, consecutively, right? Okay. <laughs> now we extinguish the, uh, the flame by saying the words together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we gather together again. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Day is breaking in my soul. Go in peace. <laughs>